The censorship law that Ireland may pass is the most draconian censorship initiative anywhere in the world right now. The idea that the police could go into people's homes and read their computers and read what's on their phones and even confiscate them, take them to jail if they refuse, this is out of the dark ages. This is not something that we would expect from a modern, progressive country like Ireland. So I was very delighted to come here and speak out against this, try to understand what's happening. I spent a couple hours this morning interviewing people on the street. And what I discovered is that very few people that we interviewed had even heard of this law. And even the people that had heard of it had no idea that it would empower the police to invade people's homes. So I think there's something really pathological about censorship. I think there's something wrong with you if you want to silence your fellow citizen. And we need to speak out against that. And we need to remind ourselves why free speech is the foundation for our uh, civilized societies. I mean, this is a law that could result in the imprisonment of innocent people, of people expressing their free speech. It, would, it opens itself up to an abuse of power. We know that many politicians are very narcissistic and they don't like to be criticized. So imagine them then sending the police to go and confiscate the telephones and the computers of their political opponents. All of that would be legal under this law. And so what you're talking about is a really dangerous crackdown. It's really the destruction both of free speech and of democracy because you're talking about potentially criminalizing necessary political speech that, we, that people need to be able to share. The other thing I was going to say is that the way that we reduce hatred is through dialogue, is through conversation. No society ever in human history has reduced prejudice or hatred through censorship. Censorship has only been used as a means to oppress. It's never been used as a means to liberate. Free speech is often the first thing that marginalized groups demand and get in the march towards freedom. And we need to remind people that, that we don't help anybody by trying to silence the people we disagree with. And obviously you're here from the States, you have a huge platform in America. One of the things we've seen, I think it's fair to say, is that this law and this discussion around free speech in Ireland has actually driven an, a lot of international coverage, a lot of international attention has been received. I'm sure for you that's an indication of how worrying this law is perceived to be from a lot of people. Well, it was really thanks to Grip Media that we heard about this. We saw that Ben Scallon had been uh, asking tough questions of the prime minister, of different senators. None of us knew about it. We really didn't believe it because most of us think that Irish are some of the friendliest, kindest people in the world. So we were shocked to learn that they were seriously considering this kinds of legislation. It seemed like something out of the Spanish Inquisition or something out of the Dark Ages. We created a star chamber to judge people for their views. And so we were shocked by it when we read more about it and learned about the bill and spoke with people in Ireland we realized it was true that this was seriously being considered. It had already passed the parliament and was going to the Senate. So we knew we had to do our part to help. Americans, we have many Irish people in the United States. The immigrants came from Ireland for over the last century. So we have a deep affection for the Irish people. Many of us visit Ireland as tourists. Many Irish come to the United States. So we really do feel that, that brotherly and sisterly love. And so we felt an obligation to join our friends here and speak out about this. Have you seen similar attempts to criminalize speech in America as well? Yeah, in the United States, we have very strong free speech protections in our First Amendment of the Constitution, but we have seen the rise of a censorship industrial complex that was working secretly behind the scenes to demand censorship of disfavored views by Twitter and Facebook and other social media platforms, by NGOs with, with close ties to the government. And there's now a big case that is almost certainly going to go to the Supreme Court where the attorneys general from Missouri and Louisiana sued the Biden White House for the Biden administration's pressure on social media companies to censor individuals. So that's now in the courts. We're hoping for a big victory. But ultimately, we have to change hearts and minds because I think there's just a lot of intolerance in the people that want to censor. They are often quite privileged people that don't like the discomfort of having people disagree with them. And so I think it's a kind of narcissistic rage or a kind of anti-social disorder that they want to shut down these different voices. You are a very high profile journalist. For you, what is the importance of having independent media which is not state funded and is there to create an alternative platform for people? I don't think you can get the truth anymore from the mainstream 
media, whether it's state funded or corporate funded, it's all about the small, independent, scrappy um, media companies like Gripped or like Public, our Substack publication. It really, people have to have desire to get to the truth. You can't get to the truth by letting the truth come to you. You have to go out and get it. You have to go out and ask the hard questions. You have to go and get the data. You have to go read the responses like Ben Scallon did. That's true journalism. True investigative journalism is assertive, it's proactive, it's aggressive, um, it's disagreeable. It doesn't accept what we're being told. So really you can't get the truth unless you get it from independent media. And that's why people need to support independent media. Uh, consider making your donation to independent media because it's hard to get the facts from the corporate media. They distort the facts, they advocate censorship. So for me, much more important to support independent media right now than to support some NGO, many of which are funded by billionaires who don't live in Ireland, who don't care about Ireland, and are persecuting and prosecuting a particular political agenda. Finally, do you have a message for our Irish lawmakers who are behind this law, who have pushed this legislation? Would you have a message for them? Well, I think they need to know that the world is watching them. People know who Helen McEntee is at this point. We know that she's the Justice Minister of Ireland. We also see heroes like Senator Keegan, who are speaking out, speaking for free speech, and so we're paying attention. I don't think Americans have paid this much attention to Ireland in a very long time. And I think we're waiting for the Irish people to rise up and speak out for free speech. We're on the side of the ones that want open, open dialogue, open disagreement, not this secretive government police kind of home invasion approach to dealing with disagreement.